In the early days of YouTube, there was one creator who would soar to new heights not seen on the platform yet. Hey, it's Fred! Fred, a character played by Lucas Cruikshank that would take the YouTube and online landscape by storm. In 2009, the Fred YouTube channel would hit 1 million subscribers, becoming the first channel in the platform's history to do so. This didn't go without notice, specifically by Nickelodeon right before he had hit that milestone, which led to a couple of things. First, an appearance on the most popular Nick show at the time, iCarly, with the episode I Meet Fred, focusing on a fictional version of Lucas behind the scenes of the character, but later on in that year, a Fred feature-length movie was in the works by Nickelodeon for TV, and Fred the Movie was released in late 2010. But it was just the start, as it would later turn out a sequel movie in 2011 and a third movie making it a trilogy in 2012. Nickelodeon was betting big on the success of internet star power, hoping to translate the success Lucas saw with Fred on YouTube to their network. They even continued the Fred character into his own one-season show that ran from January of 2012 to August of the same year. But was it too much Fred too fast? Was the experience of it all not great mostly for Lucas himself? Well, with the lackluster response from fans and critics alone, the interest in the character was spreading too thin, even for Lucas. Maybe it was time to step away from the character of Fred and time for Lucas to shine in the spotlight. Nickelodeon went along with another show idea quickly after, where Lucas was cast as the main character of that show, something completely different from Fred allowing him to try something new, or so we all thought. This new show would be Marvin Marvin, and it would be both a fresh start for Lucas and a last chance taken by Nickelodeon to try and capture the same success he saw on the internet. Today, let's dig into Marvin Marvin, what it was all about, what happened to it, and as a result, what happened after. If you enjoy the video, you better subscribe. It's time to hang out with an alien in Marvin Marvin. Why do people even watch other people on YouTube? It's weird, it's creepy. I don't get it. When it came to Fred, it was Lucas's creation, but for Marvin Marvin, self-admittingly, he was not involved with anything other than being cast as the lead in the show. Marvin Marvin would follow an alien kid who gets sent away from his own planet, which is currently at war with another alien race, to Earth, where he has integrated himself into a regular family home with your average Earth family in Oregon. While still having his original alien form, he is able to be cloaked as a regular Earth child, who tries to become accustomed to the ways of Earthlings, but more specifically, your typical teenager. He also still does have some of his otherworldly powers, such as having a hot finger, a cold finger, mucus cannon, and he can talk to animals, on top of various other random powers he has. They are never really the main focus, and only come around for a gag every once in a while. Kiss me. Marvin Marvin, the brand new series premieres Saturday, November 24th at 8.30. The family Marvin is a part of consists of Liz, the mother, played by Mim Drew, Bob the father, played by Pat Finn, Terry the daughter, played by Victory Van Toyle, Henry the son, played by Jacob Bertrand, yeah, that's the hawk from Cobra Kai, also Chip Chambers from iCarly. Neat. And then there's Pop Pop, the grandfather played by Casey Sander. It's your typical household for a sitcom, but it's also different because they now live with an alien that they agreed to watch over when he landed on Earth. The series would follow Marvin's differences from everyone else, causing the majority of the problems for any sort of plots. Whether it's him wanting to attend school like a regular teenager would, evading special agents looking for an alien actively, or just trying to maintain his own customs from his home planet. It's really just Marvin getting into to various situations and how he gets out of them. And of course, we'll learn some lessons along the way. He deals in feelings of love, getting both confused and excited of understanding the customs of Earth and wanting to fit in while still unapologetically being himself. We also have another recurring character, Terry's best friend Brianna, played by Camille Sperlin, who sometimes just gets tangled into all the shenanigans going on and even gets to learn about Marvin's true alien form in the 10th episode of the show when it became absolutely necessary for her to know. No. The characters on the show all play within their own molds, with the parents being protective but kind of dorky at times. Terry deals with trying to not be embarrassed by him at school, but isn't overly snooty about it, just a bit sarcastic in her enjoyment of it all. Henry is very much the little brother type, being in his own world, with his own stuff to do, and is paired a lot with the grandpa character, who is, a uh, certainly a character. By the way, 
How'd that go the other night? Watch the double feature, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but what I really do like is that the family operates as a family, more times than all doing their own things or having conflict between the family members themselves that becomes overdramatic. It felt like a nicer breath of fresh air, but that ultimately doesn't mean the plot, dialogue, and all of that are all too original or great. The show is very much akin to the late 70s, early 80s sitcom Mork and Mindy, which had a similar premise somewhat, but that show is a classic whereas Marvin Marvin has quickly become a forgotten show in the sea of every other Nickelodeon sitcom at the time. And what's also disappointing is the lack of a theme song. It really helps make so many shows memorable, at least at the bare minimum. But here, it's just an explanation of how Marvin got to Earth, and we only get the title of the show Marvin Marvin when the teacher asks him for his full name, and his new Earth sister is a bit embarrassed he's there, and doesn't want him to share her last name. So he says Marvin is also his last name. Boom, show title. And he even fights one of the reasons why. Yeah, the evil Bryce Walker, that's him. There really isn't a lot here for the show itself that stands out enough to thoroughly discuss. Now, comedy is subjective, but to me, it really never hit the label of being called a comedy. It's extremely aimed more juvenile than anything, usually having moments that are gross for the sake of being gross. Like, there's this minute-long vomit scene where Marvin just vomits purple goo onto everyone. They talk about butts a lot and that's really the humor in the show. There's always worry of a constant threat of evil aliens who are looking for Marvin in hiding that really only builds up in the final episode of the series. It sadly boiled down to relying on the star power of Lucas and the online space he comes from over making something because there was a vision, and instead feeling like they were making something for the sake of making something. And I am sure that there were some people who put their passion into working on this, saying there wasn't would not be fair, but the final packaged product didn't come off that way in the grand scheme of things. It felt like it tried to be a marketable package with someone that they were trying to use as marketable bait. The show itself is the run-of-the-mill sitcom for Nickelodeon. It was in this new age middle ground area where it wasn't as interesting and well put together like the shows before it, like Drake and Josh, iCarly, Victorious, and many others from the mid-2000s era. And it never found the new age audience for more current live action shows and sitcoms from Nickelodeon, really being stuck in this middle child zone. No fault to Lucas himself, but with the network pushing hard on the Fred franchise having the show and the third movie for Fred come out in the same year that this show premiered was just too soon to try something new. By the time it premiered, the Fred character was too fresh in the viewers' minds for Nick. It was hard to shake off the identity of Lucas being Fred because of how synonymous his face was to the character. Plus, the personality of Marvin in the show, being zany and energetic, isn't far off from Fred's personality, you know, just minus the high-pitched voice. The reviews for the show weren't great, and while the viewership stayed between 1.7 to 2.9 million views an episode, it wasn't able to match that of the higher viewership of the other shows at the time. It couldn't reach those heights, and on April 27, 2013, the show came to an end and was ultimately cancelled. At least the final episode featured a crossover with Big Time Rush, which Nickelodeon also had a show for at the time with the same name, Big Time Rush, which was highly successful on the network and an easy way to get people over to that show before it would come to its own end after four seasons in July of 2013. Heck, even Lucas, not as Marvin or Fred, would make a cameo as himself in an elevator in the Big Time Rush episode, Big Time Cameo. And before fully being done with Nickelodeon, he would voice a character in an episode of the Monsters vs. Aliens animated series for the network. But after all of that, in 2013, Lucas would be officially out of the spotlight. It's just kind of poetic that in the end of Marvin Marvin, he defeats aliens disguised as Big Time Rush with helium that sounds like Fred's voice. Wow, can you imagine talking like that all the time? How weird. Hello, I'm Marvin the Human Boy. I remember when Marvin Marvin was coming out. I'm always rooting for YouTubers to spread their wings and enter new avenues. So no matter what you thought of Fred on YouTube or when the character transitioned to TV, the achievements that Lucas as a YouTuber was able to accomplish off the back of something he made is commendable. Marvin Marvin, in my own opinion, was not a great show. Back then when it came out, I felt that way. Today, I do as well. I think the premise is fun for a sitcom style, but it never did anything interesting to stay 
stand out from the average family-based sitcom we'd see in any other similar show across any network. Adding on to the fact that it was not easy at the time to separate Fred from Lucas. Today, I didn't have that problem as a viewer, but it really felt like the thing holding this show up from total collapse was the star power of having this massive internet personality leading it. After the show, Lucas would step away from the acting world. Since then, he has kept up with his own personal YouTube channel simply called Lucas to find his own level of new success away from the Fred character, spending time making videos about whatever interests him, and even sometimes digs into his own past, specifically dealing with the Fred franchise on Nickelodeon. He sat down with his brother Jacob on his channel to discuss Marvin Marvin, looking back into his time on the show, where it seems there really isn't any hardships between working on that and to where he is now. Just being grateful that he still got to make two different TV shows, some movies, and have a little bit of fun in Hollywood. Hollywood and its critics were not kind to Fred, and that building up of negativity mixed with his own annoyance from playing that character for so long, his throat getting sore from the screaming he constantly had to do, and not loving what the character was becoming under Nickelodeon's leadership led to Lucas having less interest in continuing it. He felt stuck, and it led to the Fred character having a definitive stop, and immediately jumping aboard to a new show with Nickelodeon. Marvin Marvin would end with a short run of 19 episodes and a statement from Lucas saying, I've been a Nickelodeon boy for years, and today it came to an end. So excited for new beginnings. He would officially be done with his time at Nickelodeon and the mainstream spotlight. The Fred channel and the character himself would be out of his hands and repackaged into whatever it is today. For Lucas, he enjoys his time out of Hollywood and back where it all started, right here on YouTube, making content fully that is in his control, the way he wants to make it, now having over 3 million subscribers and uploads about 2-3 to three times a month. While Lucas's time in Hollywood ended and he hasn't done anything else in that space since, I am happy to see him doing well back on YouTube creating the content that he wants to create, and he seems a lot happier with where he is at. That isn't to say one day he won't ever want to do something beyond this platform again, and if he does, I think he's far enough removed from the character of Fred to not feel as put into a box. Here's to you, Lucas. Keep paving your own path. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.